Well, blessed morning, blessed morning, blessed morning, blessed morning, blessed morning, blessed morning, blessed morning. For this is the day that the Lord he has made. I shall rejoice and I shall be glad in it. You know, every time I come out here, my nose just, it's like something wrong with my nose. Either my sinus is acting up, my nose is itching, and, and that, that's just really something to distract me, but it's okay. We give the Lord praise and honor this morning, for He is good. Uh, today, we are fasting for four hours. If you are still doing our 40-day consecration, uh, please continue, whatever it is that you have sacrificed unto the Lord. Uh, but today, we are fasting for four hours. Uh, meaning do not put any, um, you know, beverage in your mouth or any food on your tongue um, for four hours. And we are reading Isaiah 58 and 6. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Um, also tonight at 7.30 p.m., we have our family meeting and I invite you and encourage you to join us. What a place and a time that we have in the Lord uh, being taught and, and singing and, and giving testimonies of the goodness of God. Um, I want to encourage you on this morning to know that whatever it is that you're battling, I know that the Lord is with you. There are a lot of people going through this. This year we came in, we came in headstrong. You know, we desire these things of the Lord. This is what we request of God. And, you know, you may be in attack right now or things may not be going the way you desire. But I just want to encourage you to keep your faith. You know, don't let go of the Lord's word. Don't let go of what God has promised you. He did not say it would be easy, but he did say he wouldn't leave you. So you got to just hold on to the promises of God. Um, also, we have an event scheduled for February the 8th. Um, I will be changing that date. I, I'm going to push it out a little bit further. Uh, that way it gives me more time. Uh, I operate out of a spirit of excellency. I do not do things halfway. And I, I need more time to make sure this is done um, the way I desire through the Lord to be done. Uh, and I just want to encourage you this morning. I know a lot of us are battling um, with different things. Uh, but one of the most important things we want to go back to, and it's something that has been on my heart for the past three to four months that we've been talking about, uh, is emotional instability. And, and it's very important for us to realize and allow the Lord to uh, regroup our emotions. And how do we do that? Well, we do that by being in the word of God. The word of the God, the word of the Lord strengthens us. Now, there are a lot of people because they've been in uh, church for such a long time. You know, like me, I was in church when I was in my mom's stomach, right? Well, um, we know scriptures because we've heard them so much, right? But the thing is that when you begin to truly study the word and the word begins to change you, not read the word because you can read something and not get an understanding of it. Uh, you read the word and study the word so that you get an understanding and you get wisdom. Well, it begins to grow you. It begins to transform you. But a lot of times, a lot of people know scriptures, but the scriptures don't know them. What do I mean by that? I mean that we'll read with an intention to only say that we read but not study and dissect it so that we grow and benefit from it. When you go to school to be a doctor or you go to school to be whatever it is you're going to be, you study so that it improves your gift, right? You study so that you are the best at what you do. So whatever it is that you're trying to grow in or whatever it is you're trying to graduate in, you utilize that not to just get by, but so that it changes your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that revelation. So when you're going to school to be a doctor or a lawyer, right? How many times do people have to take the bar before they pass it? They intentionally make it very difficult to pass because they want to make sure that you understand what? The content and what it takes to be an attorney. Well, that's the same thing with the word. If you study the word, and if you're in the word of God and you're digesting it and practicing it, what does it do? It makes you stronger. Not just that, it allows you to walk in the love of God. 
Yesterday, I was watching a video by Yolanda, and I thank God that, you know, when I come on here and I talk, that people actually grasp what I'm saying. And she was expressing how fight your demons with love, right? In Romans 12, the scripture tells us and God tells us that vengeance is here, said the Lord. So how do you fight? You don't fight being aggressive. You got to learn how to leave things alone. Fight in love. Pray for your enemy. Pray for things that are coming against you and you don't know how to resolve them. Because that helps you, you know, to be able to do what it is that the Lord requires of you. But a lot of times we put so much energy and focus on the situation that we forget to result the word and put the word into what we're going through. The word is a discerner. It, it strengthens you. And you have to realize that as you walk in this walk with Christ, that you will have opposition, but you're not fighting by yourself. You will have things that arise in your life that try to shift you. But one of the things that she mentioned was about people that check on you because they love you, because they care. And I was just watching the video and I had no idea that she was going to mention me. I, <laughs> I didn't catch the live, but I went back and watched it. And she said, you know, I thank God for my sister in Christ, Yvette. She said, because she hasn't even known me. I haven't physically met her yet, but she checks on me and calls me more than people that have known me all my life. Why do I share that? Because it's very important that when the word is in us, the things that we say we execute, I don't do it for recognition. I do it because I love. That's why I encourage you. You have to tighten up. You have to get your emotions intact because the enemy uses emotional situations to keep you staggered. How you process, how you transform your mind, how you look at situations is how you're going to see the outcome in the way that you desire. But if you do not allow the Lord and the word to give you understanding, you'll always find yourself in an uncomfortable situation. So, you know, we also have to realize that not everything that happens that a person is trying to attack us. Sometimes I, I have a major in psychology and, um, you know, I really didn't pursue it because always paying attention to people's behaviors just kind of just, I was like, uh, uh, but now I understand why the Lord led me down that path. Right. It helps me, uh, be a better leader, pastor, friend, whatever you want to call me. A lot of times when people react to situations and how they react is based on what they're going through in the current moment. So you can have five days a week. Follow me because I like to teach. I like to give you knowledge. It's not just about coming and giving scripture. It's about encouraging you in your day to strive to be better in God. You could have five days a week, same one person. Monday is proven. People act real funky on, on Mondays. They get back at work. They wish they were still at the weekend. They look crabby. So on Mondays, you need to have a little bit more of understanding with people, right? I teach my son that. Baby, people be real short fused on Monday. So you got to make sure that you act right. Because the way they will respond to you on a Friday is not the way they're going to respond to you on a Monday. Follow where I'm going with this. This is going to bless you. So Monday, you got one. We're going to use one person. On Monday, that person is just so tense. So every little thing, they just yelling, screaming, reacting. And you're like, well, what did I do? You didn't do anything. It's what they're going through in that day. Well, Tuesday, things begin to lighten up a little bit. So it's like, wow, well, maybe she's having a, or he or she's having a better day today. And then Wednesday, they start smiling and, hey, how you doing? And, you know, okay, I'm dealing with a whole new person. By Friday, 
that person is laughing, talking, joking. Hey, you want some coffee? I got donuts for y'all. And you like, but this person was like mean and ugly and nasty on Monday because it's what's the what is in the person's environment, how the person thinks. I was in the store yesterday uh, in the Publix that I go to. I've been going there for years. And the people know me. I've been going in there forever. And I talk to them. We be conversing, talking about God, talking about everything. So one of the guys, I was like, hey, how you doing? He was like, oh, I'm not doing that good today. So I was like, okay, typically that's not him. So something must be going on. So I was like, well, I pray for you, you know, that everything works out for you. So the one girl was like, who was bagging my stuff, she was like, yeah, Mondays suck. And I'm like, no, they don't. It's just how we think about them. See, <laughs> we don't understand why the Bible says, be ye transformed, right? Of the of your mind. The way you think is how your circumstances are going to play out. The way you process, the way you conduct yourself, the way you allow things to bottle up within you is how you're going to reciprocate things out. So you don't even realize sometimes that you're acting a certain way because for one, not the way you should be, right? And the word of God strengthens you emotionally where you're not responding to things from an emotional perspective. Now you're human. So some people say, well, you know, how do I, I mean, I'm human. Yes, you are. But if you're growing in the word of God, you shouldn't always be in a situation where you got to apologize because you're going off on somebody. That's not, that's not God. Yesterday I was thinking about Jesus and all the things that Jesus endured. You didn't hear Jesus having to apologize because he never was offensive. Even though he wasn't offensive, he was still taken to be offensive. And the things that they did to him because they took offense, not because he was being offensive, but it was how they reciprocated it. We have to understand how important it is to be humble, right? Not everybody's going to perceive or understand what you're saying. But if you allow the word to be rooted in you, in your womb, it will grow you. Now, a lot of people don't want to hear about growth in the word. They want to hear about prophecy. You know, the Lord going to bless them and they want somebody to come and just be praying and, and putting out all this energy. But the important thing is your soul needs to grow. And in order for your soul to grow, you need to be taught. And you need to study. You need to be increased in the word of God. You cannot grow thinking that because you attend Sunday morning service that that's it. You can't grow thinking that because you listen to Pastor Yvette, you know, during the morning encouragement. That's it. You have to put work behind it. That's why they say faith without works is what? dead so if you believe in god do the things that god requires of you so that he can grow you this year 2020 is the year of freedom we are climbing out of the valley so if we're climbing out of the valley guess what happens bless morning baby god bless you guess what happens you're gonna have to do what it takes to get out of there because climbing requires physical activity right that's one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit did not tell me to say coming out of the valley. Because coming out of the valley, you could just come out of it with no work behind it, right? Yes, we desire to come out of the valley, but this year we're climbing out. That means you're going to put in some physical activity. You're going to be reading your word. You're going to be fasting. You're going to be praying because it's time to grow you spiritually. And know that God has greatness ordained over your life. So as we continue to talk about emotional instability, because we don't want to walk being emotional. Can you imagine if someone who didn't know the Lord came to you and because you were having a bad day and didn't know how to differentiate and engage them from a Christian perspective, you would lose a person. Right? Right? And then you got to, oh, well, I was just having an off day, but you've turned this person completely. Now, I'm not talking about people who know your personality and, you know, and they just acting crazy. I'm, I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about 
understanding that God has positioned us to draw people to him. And because he desires for us to draw people unto his kingdom, we got to tighten up. Some of y'all too extra. Too extra. And you're too sensitive. And when you're sensitive, it's because you're not in the word of God. Every time somebody says something to you, they should not have to walk on eggshells because they fear or not even fear because we don't want to use that. That's too strong of a word. But they don't want to put themselves in a position where you throw in tantrums. That, that's not how that's going to work. You know, ask the Lord to help you process where you're not always on the offense. So we thank the Lord this morning. We're going to go through our sayings. Him, H-I-M-M. He is molding me. You know, when I'm getting on y'all, I know most of y'all ain't going to want to listen because y'all don't like when I get on. But I have to teach you the truth. I do. Because I want your soul to grow. It's not about hooping and hollering and praising the Lord. I know I get on here and I be, you know, we be praising the Lord, play, playing songs and things like that because we worship. But it's also about growing who you are and being stronger in your walk. And you got to realize and understand that every day you walk with God, there's going to be some type of opposition, but it's how you handle it. Not every reaction deserve, not every action deserves a reaction and how you react is always important. Now you might have moments where you slip up. It's okay. You're human. But if every time you cussing somebody out, cause you know, they didn't say something you don't like, you ain't in your word and stop cursing yourself. Cause you curse yourself to the bones. Don't do that stop stop all that all right pray p-r-a-y prioritize righteousness around you we're hashtagging addicted to jesus we bought that jesus life we stay ready we're chucking up the deuces to satan he got to go because we serving jesus he got to pack his bags and get up out of here because we ain't playing with satan we don't like him because we definitely we ain't scared so uh i am bad i am bad i am blessed and delivered i'm rocking with the best j-e-s-u-s -S. They play checkers, we play chess, we're strategic in how we serve the Lord. Uh, tighten up, we live a life of prosperity, we're hashtagging, we are restored, pump your brakes. Use me, Lord, for your glory. Uh, stop being extra, you are what you answer to. Oh, Renata got all of them in here in the comments this morning, that's my baby. We don't shake, we shift. Oh, she got them all up in here, yes, Lord. And and I want to incorporate, too, what... Uh, what Yolanda said yesterday, fight your demons with love. Love cures a multitude of sin, not you cussing out somebody. Okay? That's the Bible. That's scripture. That's not Yvette. That ain't pastor. That's scripture. Love is love cures a multitude of sin. And that's what Yolanda was saying. Your demons sin, they correlate, right? How do you get rid of it? Love. Love, love yourself enough to be in the word of God. Love God enough to obey his will. Love God enough where you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love God enough that you don't allow yourself to try to fight your battles, that you let God fight your battles. That's what she's, that's what she's saying. And it shouldn't take catastrophic events for us to realize how important it is to love somebody. Change your mind, man. Floss yourself. I, I got a, a leader that I see. He always posts about floss your mind. Uh, I think it's uh, Pastor Terrence. I can't think of his name. Or oh, Elder. I'm I'm sorry, Elder. Uh, I think his name is Terrence. I always say, floss your mind. Listen, I love you guys. Trust in the Lord and do good and know that ye shall always be fed and that ye shall dwell in the land forever. Know that all things that they work for the greater good for those of us who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and God's righteousness. And in all things, acknowledge God in all of your ways, and he will direct your path. Be sober-minded and vigilant in your spirit, because that enemy of yours, the devil, he roams around like a fierce lion, seeking for someone to devour. Know that God loves you, and so do I. You're very important to the body of Christ. God needs you to strengthen your thought process. Be in his word so that his word can be in you. I, I It's great that you know the scripture, but does the scripture know you? And the thing is that you'll know the scripture and you'll put the scripture into a place where it doesn't fit. 
God is love and you have to grow emotionally because you don't want to keep drinking milk from the word. You want to be eating the meat of the word. That's where you see the Lord move in your life. We got to get our emotions under control. We're damaging people. And we want to love people. So God bless you. Have a blessed day. You guys know that I love you. And walk in the promises of God. Have a blessed day. Stay encouraged. And remember to encourage someone today. God bless you.